Let's talk about arbitrage pricing theory, or APT. APT is an alternative to the capital asset pricing model, and it's based on the law of one price. This was first derived by Stephen Ross back in 1976, about a decade after the cap capital asset pricing model was formulated. One of the nice things about it is it uses less restrictive assumptions than CAPM. Okay? Um, it does assume or require that the returns on any stock be linearly related to a set of indexes. So we have a multi-index model here. And I have a tutorial where I discussed multi-index models. So it's nice because rather than just have one index, you can have several indexes to price the return of a security. The downside is that it doesn't tell us what the index should be. For the CAPM, it's the return on the market. Now, an easy way or the best way to get a basic understanding of this is let's look at a two index model. And here we have the returns for security I are generated by, there's an intercept term, there's a sensitivity of stock I's returns to the first market index, there's a sensitivity of uh, stock I's returns to the second index index, etc. And of course, if we wanted to have more indexes, we could. We're also going to assume that the expected value of EI, EJ is about zero. That is that they're not, there's no correlation between the returns for uh, the different securities. So if an investor is only concerned with expected return and risk, then he only needs to be concerned with two, uh, with three attributes for any portfolio the expected return for the portfolio, the uh, beta or the systematic risk for the portfolio with respect to the first index, and the systematic risk of the portfolio with respect to the second index. If the portfolio is well diversified, then we don't have to worry about um, residual risk because that goes to zero. Okay, So only systematic risk matters. So. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have three portfolios, A, B, and C. A has an expected return of 15. Okay, Its first systematic risk factor is 1.0. Its second is 0.6. Okay, B has an expected return of 14%. Uh, its uh, first systematic risk factor is 0.5. Its second is 1.0, etc. So what we have here is we have three equations, and we have uh, three unknowns. So what we can do is we can solve this as the equation for a plane. And if we want to work that out, right, we're solving for A and then the coefficient for B and, and for B1 and for B2. And we get this equation. Now I'm not going to do that here, but you can work that out for yourself. So the expected return for security I is 7.75 plus five times whatever the first systematic risk factor is, plus 3.75 times whatever the second systematic risk factor is. The expected return and risk measures of any portfolio of these, uh, of these three portfolios is um, just a weighted average of these returns, right? So it's a proportion you have in uh, you know, stock one times the expected return of stock one plus the uh, proportion you have in stock two times the expected return of stock two, etc. Okay, beta for the portfolio for the first factor is just a weighted average of all of these BI ones, okay, for the different uh, um, securities in the portfolio, okay, likewise for BI two, okay, if we sum up XI, it equals one, okay, so we're 100% invested, you know, so if we have, uh, you know, 10 stocks, maybe we'll put 10% in each stock. Okay, all three, three of these portfolios, A, B, and C, will lie on a plane. Now, here's where the arbitrage pricing comes in. Suppose there's a new portfolio, not on the plane. We want to ask ourselves, can this actually exist? Portfolio E, for example, has an expected return of 15%, and we're going to assume that BI1 is 0.6 and BI2 is also 0.6. Well, what we can do is we can create a portfolio D 
that's made up of A, B, and C with one-third in each one of these portfolios. And you'll notice that if we take this weighted average, uh, this would be a third times the, the uh, first risk factor for A, okay, plus, uh, um, plus a third times the, you know, sensitivity of B1 to, uh, uh, to the second portfolio B, et cetera. We get 0 0.6, okay, we do that for the second um, risk factor here, a second systematic risk factor. We also get 0.6. So we have a portfolio that has the same systematic risk as portfolio E. And let's see what happens here. Well, if we put a third into each, right, these are the expected returns of A, B, and C, we get an expected return for our portfolio of 13%, not 15%. Similarly, we could have used that equation that we solved before, 7.75, and just plugged in these systematic risk factors, and the return should be 13%. By the law of one price, these portfolios should have the same expected return because they have the same level of risk. Okay, Here I tried to draw a little picture so you get a, a visual of this. It's not really drawn correctly. I don't have these moving in the, you know, the right amount down it down B1 and B2, but you have a plane here for A, B, and C. These are priced correctly. You have this portfolio E that lies above the plane, and we found that we could create a portfolio D that had the same level of risk that was on the plane. So what's, what's going to happen here? This can't exist, okay? What's going to happen is that arbitragers are going to buy portfolio E, right? For the level of risk they take, they get a higher expected return than D, and they're going to short D. And what this is going to do, it's going to guarantee a riskless profit. Not only is it going to guarantee a riskless profit, it's going to guarantee a riskless profit that doesn't cost anything. Okay, you can earn the risk-free rate by buying a treasury bill, for example, but you actually have to put your own money up. So if we look down here, we short D and our initial cash flows, we get $100, okay? The money comes into us because we sold it short, but we have to pay back 113, okay? 13%, so we're going to pay back the 100 plus 13% of that, okay? Has the same risk, okay? And because we're shorting it, it has negative betas here. Portfolio E, we're going to spend that $100 to buy portfolio E, and we're going to get back 115 when it matures, okay? And these are going to have positive risk factors. So what do you see here? There's no cost to this investment, okay? There's no risk, okay? These are zero, yet you get a positive cash flow. And what's that going to do? That's going to drive up the price of E because everybody's buying it. That's going to drive, drive, drive the price of E up enough so that the return is just going to be equal to what it should be, which is 13%. Okay, the general equation of a plane and expected return space is written this way. The expected return of I is equal to lambda zero plus lambda one times that first risk factor plus lambda two times that second risk factor. Okay, if there's no risk, that is, bi1 is equal to zero and bi2 is equal to zero, then lambda zero should be the risk-free rate. Okay, if there's no risk-free rate, sometimes we use something called the zero beta portfolio, but uh, let's just uh, assume it's the risk-free rate. And then what you do is, if you were to take, um, eliminate the second risk factor, make bi2 equal to zero and bi1 equal to one, and you solve for it, Lambda 1 equals R bar, um, the expected return of 1 minus the risk-free rate, okay? And you could do that for Lambda 2. You get a similar uh, type equation. So if in some ways, it looks a lot like the CAPM. Remember the CAPM was the expected return of the market, or I'm sorry, the expected return for Security I was the risk-free rate, which we said this is, plus beta, times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. This happens to be not necessarily the expected return of the market, 
but the first um, the first index. Okay, it could be the expected return of the market. It could be something else. So it looks somewhat similar. Okay, and you can get a generalized version of this. But this is essentially what APT looks like. And again, the nice thing about APT is that it um, it allows us to use more indexes. Okay, so you may have some industry indexes. You may have uh, you know an inflation index, etc. But it also uses less restrictive assumptions. Okay, the the most important assumption is is this law of one price, the concept of arbitrage. 